Okay, hi everybody. Both, uh, this is kind of hard because um, of the way this room is designed and how I have to talk. So I'm going to turn my back for a minute and I need the people who are online to tell me if you guys can still hear me. If I stand like this, can you guys hear me when I'm talking this way or is it muffled and weird? Okay, cool. All right, great. Um, I just happened to be loud enough for this to work. Um, <coughs> all right, so uh, this is this. My name is Amanda Clausen. I'm the Learning Design Librarian with Library Learning Services, and um, so this session on Lion Search and the Cat is done both in person here at University Park. I'm in 140 in the Knowledge Commons with a few folks, and of course, it's going to be online. So. I'm going to ask the people in the room that when you remember that when you're discussing something with me, that either I have to convey it to everyone or Rita has to type it to them. So um, make sure that you sort of speak deliberately and slow. Or if you have a question, maybe when you're asking it, you could also type it on Adobe Connect. That would be even more fantastic. Um, so if you're confused, if folks that are online, if you get confused because there's some stuff going on in the room that you don't understand, just give a yell and uh, Rita will notice on chat and we will try to make sure that you're included in this conversation. Having these connect sessions, I've been working on them with the community practice as well. There's it's a little bit of a challenge to bring everyone together this way, but we'll figure it out. We're getting better. So anyway, I'm going to be talking about Lion Search and the Cat today, and I want to start that, this out by saying that I am not a cataloger, um, or nor am I in tech services. So there are some questions about Lion Search and the Cat that I simply cannot answer. I don't create the metadata, and I haven't done anything cataloging related since I was like, I don't know, 24. So it's been a while. Um, so that said, Hopefully, if you have any questions, I'll be able to help you. Um, and this is, these are more like, well, let's just get started. <laughs> um, so the first thing that I'd really like you guys to keep in mind about searching either in line search or the cat is that research is an iterative process. That means that when you're doing research, it's going to take more than one try, typically, to get what you want. It's not like a scientific method where if you just figure out the right formula, you will automatically just get all the results that you need. It's not the way that it works. So with that in mind, research skills also improve with practice and practice with a specific tool. Using Google a lot is not going to make you better at Lion Search. Losing, using Lion Search constantly isn't going to make you better at using the cat. So if you want to get better at using these or at helping people use them, you're going to have to use them yourselves. And lastly, it's really important that when you're doing research or helping a student do research, that you choose the right tool for the job. Um, and we're going to be talking about that in a little bit more detail, but Lion Search and the cat can't cover everything. If you have a student who wants to know the population of China, you should be using a different resource other than Lion Search or the cat. You should be using some kind of reference resource, whether it's like the CIA World Factbook or even Wikipedia, um, you're going to find things more quickly that way for things that are just asking very straight up fact type questions. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to move forward. Um, and I, what I'd like you guys to do, and I have it written here that you should have a partner, but since most of you are online, just throw the partner part out the window. Um, and what I'd like you to do is try to address this situation. So you're at the desk and a student asks for a book about cat training. And when I say cat training, I mean like a pet. Like they're trying to train their cat to walk on a leash or something like that. They want a book on that. Um, so what I want you to do is go through the process of helping your student using, use, helping the student, and I want you to either use Lion Search or the cat. And be prepared to talk about what you chose and how it works. So essentially, try a search. 
And then for those of you online, tell me how it worked in the chat. Everyone could actually do that. That might be a little bit easier. And then we're going to go through the search together. And again, once you've done your search, if you want to share with us what you did, that would be great. Okay, so it looks like Linda used the cat and she started by searching for training cats as her keywords. Um, and Rita did something very, very similar. And uh, it looks like Glenn also searched for cat training in the cat um, and searched for only books. So why don't we try to emulate this search and see for ourselves up here. So if you click on search the cat, and then as you can see I've searched before, um, we'll just search for, the first search that we heard was cats training, or training cats rather. 
And when you search for that, the first result is Puppies and Kittens First Edition, which, while adorable, doesn't seem to be out training cats. However, to be sure, what we can do is click on the title and then click on the link that says Detailed Information. For many books, this is going to give you um, a lot of information about the books. It depends on the metadata, of course. That is the data about the book that's put into the catalog. Some is more elaborate than others. But for this book, um, if we scroll down, we can see the table of contents. So these are the chapters, which, based on what these chapters seem to be saying, like Playtime Puppy and one called <coughs> Meow, this is a book for children. But if there was any question, if I scrolled down, I could see that the subject is puppies, juvenile literature, and kittens, juvenile literature. So this is probably not a book that would be particularly useful to me. Um, however, it is useful to know that if you click on this description tab, or detailed information tab, you can find out a lot of information about the book that you're looking for. And this can be particularly helpful because people try to be witty when they're titling books. They very oftentimes the book, title of a book can have absolutely nothing to do with what the book is actually about. So being able to look at the contents is really important. Um, but this isn't getting us what we need. So if we go back and I scroll down through a little bit more, a lot of these are talking about like behavioral problems for dogs and cats, but it's kind of not necessarily what I'm looking for. Um, I would like something for my student that's a little bit more focused. So I'm going to try something different in the cat. Um, if I click go back, instead of looking for cats training in key anywhere, I'm going to change it to topic, title, and subject. That means um, I'm only going to search cats training towards cats training in the subject. Like, for instance, the um, cat's juvenile literature, that was a subject, um, or the title of the book. What this can do is try to get you rel re look, results that are a little bit more relevant. So I'm going to hit search here. And again, I'm getting, yeah, my mouse stopped working. Um, I'm getting results that are a lot of children's books. But then if I scroll down a little bit further, I find a book called No Naughty Cats, The First Complete Guide to Intent Cat Training. And this looks a little bit more promising. So if I click on that item and I look at the detailed information, this one doesn't have nearly as much, much metadata, but what it does have are a couple things. First of all, the subject is cat's training. There is actually a subject term for tr the training of cats. Um, what these subjects are, are they're essentially tags that are created by um, catalogers and the Library of, Con their Library of Congress subject headings. And the Library of Congress has standardized these. So no matter what catalog you're looking at, these should all be the same. So if I click on Cat's Training, I can see what other books we have on that topic. And there's two. There's the one we originally found, and there's How to Speak Cat, which just looking at the, cop the, type, uh, the cover image, it looks like it's a book for children. But if I click on it, and then I check the detailed information, I can see that this is juvenile literature. Um, but it is, if we go back to our original useful book, um, the books in our library are organized by subject, and so when you find a book physically, the books around it will often be on the same topic. And the cat allows us to browse this very easily. So if I click on nearby items on the shelf, I see many other books about essentially the care of cats. There are only two books on cat training, and they're in different locations. One is a children's book. However, there are other could also be relevant to this student. Um, some of them are about feral cats, and then we get into fish 
and a wild snail. So it's de it's deviating a little bit, but the type of library we are, we don't really have a need to collect a lot of large number of books on cat training. So it's particularly surprising that we don't have a huge number. Now, nobody used Lion Search, but I use Lion Search all, all the time. And actually, my preferred method of doing searches in the library because find that it is a little bit easier for me to use. But like I said, research being an iterative pro process it gets better with this. You need to find out what works best for you. If you like browsing and using subject headings, then the catalog is probably going to be very effective. But so if I search for cats training here, because the catalog the catalog pretty much only searches books and movies and uh, journals, whole journals that we have. It searches other things too, but for something like cat training, you're not going to come across things that aren't books for the most part. Um, but because of that, I didn't really limit based on content type. However, Lion Search kind of is searching a whole lot other than, and you can see over here just by these little icons. These are um, like uh, journal articles. There's a book, some more journal articles. This little N on the thing that looks like an article means it's from a newspaper. So what I need to do first of all is limit this to only books. So if I select book or ebook, then I'll only be searching for books that are about cat training. And as you can see, whereas our results in the cat, the first result was not the most relevant, in this case, we all book on cat training in the last holdings came up. Now a bunch of other stuff came up too, which is kind can be a problem and confusing. So you need to make yourself aware that when you see a book in Lion Search, look underneath it. That has the location of the book. So in this case, this book's at York. Now that's not a problem. You can order that book very easily. Um, so if I, if I were simply using Lion Search from the beginning and I wanted to see about this book, I could just click on a title and it has a little bit of information, but it's not nearly as detailed as the, it doesn't have really the subject headings actually, as the um, catalog record. Now I could just request the book from York from here using the I want it button, but I probably want to make sure that this book is relevant for my student first. So if I click on view in classic catalog, it's going to take me to the cat. Because the cat is better to look at the details of books. Um, so again, I can go to the detailed information tab and I can click on the I want it button. So under the I want it button, choosing a pickup location. Uh, if the student is at University Park, which I'm assuming they are because I'm at University Park, um, I would select the Petit Common Service Desk 90% of the time and then just hit place hold. In two to three business days, the book will arrive and student will receive email telling them to pick it up. And if you work at Common Services Desk, know all about this. Um, however, so I find that Lion Search is a bit better at finding items at searching. However, you still need to go to the cat. But this, underneath this, there are other books. This, this one also <laughs> seems like an adult book on cat training. But if you look, you can see that all we have is a citation online. That means that this book has been indexed, someone has talked about what it's about, and made it available for researchers to find so they can get it somewhere else. But this book would not be available in the library's holdings. It would have to be requested through interlibrary loan. So make sure when you're looking at results that avoid ones that say citation online. To do that, a really good, a, a good practice if you only want books that are available, you can click on library location and then select your library. Um, so uh, for instance, I'm going to select University Park here. I wanted to see if there was a way to avoid, um, where's University Park? It's hiding. Oh, Petit Library. There we go. Yeah, there isn't a University Park option. For yeah, that's true. There is no University Park option for the um, which is annoying. There's also no, um, to be an option where in those big lists you could select things 
that you want it, or you could exclude items or places or whatever. You can no, no longer do that, which is the worst. But we don't own Lion Search. We pay for it, so there's only so much we can do about that. But when I look at books that are only in University Park, although there are, the books are there, both the physical book and the online citation, the book that I wanted, the one that was about cat training, it's not here because that book's at York. So just be aware of these kinds of things. Um, but going back, I'm sort of getting ahead of myself a little bit here. So I would, I want to talk, oops. About um, the sort of the differences and the definitions of Lion Search and the cat. Um, so, Lion Search, even though, and I may have already referred to it as a database, but it's not actually a database. I call it a database when I'm teaching simply because it is too confusing to try to explain to students what a discovery layer or discovery service is. However, for you guys, it might be useful to know. Might be useful to know. Essential, essentially, a, um, a database is a collection of citations that have been indexed, sometimes full text, sometimes not. A discovery service is a layer that is put on top of kind of your library website that allows all of these databases to be connected. So Lion Search does not search every single database we have. For instance, PsychInfo, which is a very powerful psychology database, is not indexed by Lion Search. So results within PsychInfo cannot be found using Lion Search. There are other things that, like that too. And we don't really have any control over that. Um, but just know that when you're searching Lion Search, you're searching probably about 500 databases at once. That's a lot. Um, secondly, Lion Search is enormous. So because it's so enormous, because we're searching so many databases at once, it means that more specific queries produce better results. Now, cat training is pretty limited in scope. So we could go, we could make it by with a single concept. But typically, if you were trying to use Lion Search, Having more than one concept means you are likely to get much, much better results. And lastly, with that in mind, you want to limit your results as much as possible. Limits we applied were limited to books, we limited to a specific library. There are other limits too, like date or type of information, um, because again, it's enormous. The CAT, on the other hand, is the library's OPAC, which is, stands for Online Public Access Catalog. And I'm going to get on a soapbox here for a minute and say it would be really, really awesome if all libraries' catalogs were just called OPACs, because, or just called catalogs. But instead, we all name them these clever little things. And what that means is students don't know what they are from one institution to another. But it's the same every inst any library. Almost every library that has any sort of automation has one of these. So it covers our physical and sometimes virtual holdings. So books are in the cat. Some ebooks, not all. If you want to know why we can't find all the ebooks, you should talk to Jeff Edmonds. He can do a lovely presentation on it. But it's kind of over my head. Not all our ebook collections are findable in the cat, as far as I know. Um, additionally, it could, um, there are things like IDA, uh, jur journals that we have access to, things like that. Um, what you should avoid <laughs> doing title searches in the cat unless it's for like a book or a video. If you're searching for the title of an article, you are not going to find it because articles are not indexed. And personally, I believe that they're not particularly great at searching. For instance, you type something in, like you just copy a title and paste it in. If that title has a hyphen or a colon, they can really mess up your search results. However, as you've seen, the cat is wonderful at browsing and very good at providing descriptions. So use accordingly. So I've talked enough. Um, I want you to try another search based on what we've learned so far. 
A student has come to the desk and they're asking for information on transgender health care. Using Lion Search or the cat, go through the process of helping the student. And some of you may realize that transgender health care is a big, big topic. So if you feel like making your hypothetical student narrow it down a little bit upon, comp upon more discussion, that is absolutely fine and would be good reference practice. Okay, looks like Harrisburg used the cat and typed transgender and healthcare into topic, title, plus subject. That's a good strategy. In the interest of time, I'm just going to move us forward. Um, so I'm going to try doing, I'll just try to replicate Harrisburg's search, first of all. So going back, cat, they searched their topic, title, and subject, transgender, and healthcare, and they received healthcare disparities in the LGBT population. Looks like a pretty good one. And then there's some films on Transgender Tuesdays, whatever that is, Gen Silent. The Healthcare Equity Index, which relates to LGBTQ issues. An item called Healthcare, Transgender Cultural Competency for Medical Providers. So these look pretty good. So um, why don't we start with healthcare disparities in the LGBT population? Um, detailed information for this item. If we click on for this item, there's, there's a table of contents. And it's really important to think about when you're helping students do research, um, students typically tend to want to avoid books because they feel like they're too long. They don't have time to read a book. But in many, many cases, they don't and should not read the entire book. They should look at the table of contents, and you can help guide them through this process. Look at the table of contents and see if any of the chapters are related to what they're looking for. Because quite frankly, in this case, transgender health is a rather enormous topic. Now, there are lots of stages that students and other people are at when they're doing research. And if they're just at the point where they're like, I have to write about transgender health care, and I don't know what to write about, 
often directing them towards a book can be a really good idea. First of all, because um, almost all books have an introduction. This one does too. An introduction to the loosely knit patchwork of LGBT healthcare. So um, books and their introductions often can bridge the gap between sort of the popular information that students may know and into more literature. Um, and there may be in this case, um, you can see there an, a chapter called Limiting Transgender Health. Um, and if I just hit Command F, actually, I can just search for transgender. It's listed four times. So um, only once is a ch in chapters, but it looks like that chapter useful for a student. Now if I scroll down and look at the subject, you can see that there's a subject called transgender people medical which is prob and there's also a medical subject services for trans. I'm just going to use the regular LC subject for trans medical care and when you click on this there are um, some results that didn't come up beginning including a uh, book of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, public health. And this is an electronic resource, so if you just click on get it, that'll take you to that item. Um, and uh, items are a little bit more um, relevant than our initial search. Well, it's not actually more relevant. They're more expansive. And I don't think it included those videos under Tuesdays, but maybe it did. I'm going to look again. Yeah, so it excluded that video and added some more, some other items. So this is good. This is good. These are quite a few resources, and I think this, this would be helpful for a student. However, the concept of transgender healthcare is very large students these resources instead of writing a paper or a speech you could probably write more like a book so they might need more focused information and this is where lion search really really shines so if we do the same i'm going to clear the filters using this clear filter over in the gray area which will get rid of I books before for transgender health care going to get like 7,000 results, which is a thousand times more than the seven results we got in the cap, um, which is kind of excessive. And what's also important to consider is how some people write it as one word, some people write it as two. So to really cover sort of the scope of articles and other items about transgender health, I need to tell Lion search by healthcare or in capital letters health space care parentheses that I want both of those synonyms. When I do that, that triples my results. So there's quite a few items here, but that doesn't mean that it's not useful. Remember our limits. So, first of all, what I want to do is most of the time, and especially in a topic like transgender healthcare, resources within the past five years in line are going to be more useful. So I use the little slider and move to 2010. So now that I have 14,000 results instead of 27,000, it's still quite a few. Another thing is you might want to ask the student what kind of what kind of paper or assignment is this for. Um, for instance, a lot of these articles are going to be um, in sort of specific sub areas. So if I click on more, you can see all of the subject areas that come up. Um, let's say the student is in, like, sociology. I click that topic. It's going to limit my results even more. So I now, instead of 14,000 results, have 8,000. It is really, really hard 
line search to bring these numbers down. Um, however, uh, the, the, at this point, to bring these results down even more, you could also decide what kind of items you're looking for. So we have content type right here, so you could search for books or newspaper articles. Many times, though, students want scholarly articles, and in that case, we can limit to scholarly and peer review right there, which brings us down to 666 items. Um, so I could even, at this point, if you're a student for a little bit, maybe ask some leading questions. This student is particularly interested in their health care and cost. So if I for that, find, hmm. So what I'm finding here are articles like a lot about the quality of life and things that are sort of probably tangentially related to cost, but I'm not happy with them. So I'm going to get rid of my discipline limiter. So now I have articles that are more, it seems like at least this first one, related to cost and access of healthcare. So limiting it to discipline didn't work as well. But I sit around and I do searches with students all the time. And I didn't know automatically what to do. I had to try around, I had to play around a little bit. And that's kind of the whole point. It's not automatic. But if I see an article that I like, if I click on the title, it should automatically link me to that article. In this case, here it is. Now, this is from a legal database, and they kind of look a little awkward. Um, and legal research isn't something that happens very often, although if you need some help in this, I would talk to Helen Sheehy. She's quite um, But I'm going to select a different result. Um, Typically, this is more what the article is going to look like. And if it's a scholarly article, first of all, the first page is not going to have the whole thing. There's the abstract. And the abstract is a summary of the article, and that's it. What you, students do not realize that this is not the full article. So you need to look for a link that either says full text or full article. And in this case, you can view it in many different ways an HTML format. Students tend to prefer the PDF, so that's what I normally look for. So you have to select that, and then you have the actual article. So just keep that in mind. Every once in a while, though, and I'm going to select this same article to see if it, um, I'm going to select this article, even though we're not going to really look into it so much. If sometimes, I'm going to force this page to happen. This page comes up automatically. If that happens, you just need to select the article link. Um, so, moving forward. So the question then comes up, when should I use Lion Search and not the cat? Always, but that's mostly because I like it. If you talk to like Russ Hall from Barron, he would say never, because he doesn't like the cat. He doesn't like Lion Search that much. But it's all, I would say, a matter of preference. Sure, there are usability and efficiency issues in both. And while we have a little bit more control over the cat than we do over lion search, they're both kind of going to stay the way they are for a while. So you need to find out which you are better at searching and you feel more comfortable and the way that you like to help students. But that said, there are ways in which lion search is a lot more effective, specifically when you're doing a named item search. So if a student comes to you and they have the title of a book or an article, and you just want to search for that title, Lion Search is better at not getting messed up by punctuation, essentially. The cat, uh, unless it's exact, 
a little bit of a punctuation mess up can really confuse things. Also, you should always use, use line search if you're helping a student find articles because the cat doesn't have them. So you can find a journal where an article would live. So if you're looking for the Journal of Pediatric Nursing, you can search for that in the cat. However, you're not going to find, if they need an article on vaccine safety from the Journal of Pediatric Nursing, you're not going to find that in the cat. Um, so, but something that works, I would say equally or should work equally well in both databases are um, operators, search operators. These are things that you put onto your search to change the way that it works. The first one are what we call Boolean operators. They're and, or, and not. And what these words do is they change the way that your database interacts with your keywords. So if you put the word and between two terms, what that tells the database is that you should have, that it's telling the database that it is required that the keyword before and and the keyword after and are in every single result, the requirement. So th what this does is it will limit your search results. You will get fewer. It will make the number go down. Or on the other hand, <coughs> it's something you should use when you're doing when you're working with synonyms. A good example um, is when we were doing before with healthcare and health space care. People that some of the, the, that term turns up in both ways. What OR does is it tells the database the term before OR and the term after OR, they are interchangeable. It can have one or the other, but one of them has to be present. So what this does is it expands your results. So you can only use it if you're talking about something that's fairly synonymous. NOT isn't used particularly frequently. But what that does in the database, don't include the term not. So a good example of where to use not is if you were searching for Apple not computer. That would exclude results related that include the word computer. Now of course it's not going to exclude all of the you know Mac type computer science articles from your results. But in cases where you have two, two a word that covers two concepts that are very very different Using not can really, really help limit your results. Um, parentheses are simply useful to tell a database what Boolean operators are applying to what terms. So it'll basically follow kind of an order of operations um, where whatever word is before and after the uh, operator will be used by that operator but sometimes that is not what you want so for instance when i had i always use parentheses around the term terms that are included with or making them into like a single item i'll show you an example in a minute quotation marks tell you that these words within the quotation marks have to be exactly the way that they are in the results. So this is good if you're searching for a title, although in line search you don't normally need it. But if the title is kind of some normal words, putting quotation marks can increase your likelihood of getting your result exactly. But this is really useful for co single concepts that use two words to describe it. For instance, helicopter planet should always be put in quotation marks. And then finally, we have wildcard truncation. What wildcard truncation does is it tells the database that um, you've essentially stopped a word. Like, for example, if you put an asterisk at the end of the word child, what that will tell the database is, OK, we want child, but we will, we will accept any version of child with any ending. So ch child, children, childhood, and so on and so forth. This is particularly useful because a lot of times, um, you know, they're not, word, terms aren't exact when you're doing searches. They may use one version of a word over the other. So the final search that I'd like you guys to try is um, 
and this is one that will act, can actually include all the uh, sort of operators that I just mentioned. Well, all but one, I would say. Um, so a student wants information on how cell phones are destroying our ability to communicate. This is a question that I got constantly when I worked exclusively as a reference librarian. It's like everyone's favorite. It was in 2010 everyone's favorite topic. So um, try doing a search for this. And if you've been using like the cat all this time, try using line search <laughs> and vice versa. And then I'm going to do a demo search to show you how we can use and try to use all those operators that I mentioned. Yes? Uh, the pupil count information is in the line search. No. So you should always, if you're looking at a book, he just asked uh, the table of content information isn't in line search. And it's, it's yeah, it, it doesn't normally show up. So for a book, you should always, if you want to find more information, click on view in classic catalog, and that'll just hop you right over to the cat. Okay, so um, because we don't have a lot of time left and I want to leave some time for any questions, I'm just going to show you the way that I feel is probably the most effective way to do this search. And I would tend to lean towards the cat for a topic like this because although I'm sure in the past four years there have been books written about cell, phone and co cell phones and communication, uh, Still, there's probably many, many, many more articles on this on the topic. So, to start out with, um, we've got cell phones and communication. Those are kind of the two ideas in that research question. There's also the word destroy, but I tend to avoid searching for terms that are so qualifying like that. <laughs> like a lot of people are doing research to uh, something has increased or decreased. Um, some kind of like if standardized tests increase or decrease learning. When you put in a term like destroy or increase or whatever, that automatically makes your it automatically skews your results because people very rarely title things. Uh, cell phone are like the opposite of what they mean. So no one's going to write an article that's like cell phones are not destroying our ability to communicate, or maybe somebody might, but it's much less likely. That's not usually the way things are spun. So if I search, if I re remove that qualifying term, your cell phones of communication, and the number here is going to be 700,000 results. It's just enormous. And although this book could be potential, all the other results are, they're just all over the place. Um, and some of them are from things that like, like this doesn't even have a publisher. What is this? Um, well, it's a patent, in fact. Um, I've never seen a patent before, even though they're there, because I've never done a search that's brought one up. But that's what, what a patent looks like in Lion Search. So, but um, first of all, something to keep in mind is um, not everyone uses the term cell phones. There's a synonym for it. So I'm going to add the and you see what I did there? I put or 
or in, in line search should be in capital letters. This isn't something that other databases do, but line search requires it. So um, I put that there. Now cell phones or mobile phones are functioning sort of like a single term. And I didn't make and capital, so now it's communication. Another thing to keep in mind is communicate. Some people, maybe an article uses the word communication. Maybe one is using communicate. Maybe one's using communicates. So this is a really good time for me to put in a bit of truncation. So a little asterisk right there. And if I do this, it's going to give us even more results. Um, but it's no longer going to exclude people writing about mobile phones. So yeah, now we have 1,500,000 results. Still, like, in fact, it's even more too, way too many. So um, I can limit by publication date. So with something like this, I'm going to go with the past five years. And I'm also going to limit by what kind of field that I'm looking for. So if I look at disciplines, um, what I'm talking, what you're, we're talking about is sort of the sociological aspect of cell phones. So limiting it to um, oh, this mouse, sociology and social sciences can give us. So. Um, we have articles that are compared youth mental health interventions with mobile phones. There's a lot of different things going on here with mobile phones. So I might want to add another term, something like maybe what we're talking about is the way this has affected our culture. Hmm. So here's an article about cell phone withdrawal. And this is what always happens whenever anyone searches for this topic is they need to narrow it down. They need to talk about what exactly are cell phones affecting. Is it attention? Is it dependency? What is going on? But a search like this can sort of help you decide or direct people. Addiction is coming up a lot, so that might be something that would be useful to direct a student towards. But this is a good way of using, um, because we had when we had like a million results, and then when I attached the word culture, it removed like over half of them. And then limiting by discipline brought us down even further. So you can see the power of the way you build your search. But if I just search for a single term or even two terms, I'm going to get way, way more than I could ever possibly go through. So that's pretty much all for me. Um, but I wanted to give a minute in case anybody had any questions. Yes? I know, of course, in observation, you noticed online search when someone comes here to call my day and you can enter a search like it doesn't matter if you include like the year of the call my day or if there's a queue or not it's best to leave it off because a lot of times that can bring back the result. Okay. Um what's your name? Tim. Tim just shared with us that um they found that in line search when someone gives you a call number you don't really have to include the date, the year and the call number, but if it has a Q or, would it have a Q or an F at the end? Yeah, like if it's quarto or folio. Oh, yeah. If it has, uh, if it's like a quarto or a folio, so it would have a Q or an F at the end, you should probably leave that off because it messes it up. So that is a really useful tip. I had no idea about that because I never put call numbers into um, line search because I just don't have a need to do that. But I'm sure plenty of people do. Yeah, yeah. And they're check to see if it's available before we go out. Call number in their trembling hands. So thank you so much for sharing that. That's super useful. Looks like Linda's type in something. Oh, thank you very much, Linda. I'm glad it was useful and interesting. Thanks, Angela.
You're very welcome, Lisa. Okay, so it doesn't really look like we have any more questions, and I'm never one for trying to keep people longer than they have to be around. So thank you so much, everybody in the room and who came online. I hope this was useful to you. And if you have any questions about Lion Search, uh, please let me know. Uh, my email address, I'm going to type it real quick, um, is asc17 at psu.edu. So I can help you out. Okay, thanks.